sustainable school. Tell me more about that. Well, Shalim, thanks for having me, first of all. And I'm really passionate about what's going on here. I would rather say this is like an experimental program that if it happens to be successful, it can grow up quite a lot internationally, everywhere. So right. that's why I'm so passionate about it. Because it is, it's a concept that could be important not only for the for Zanzibar and the nation, but even outside. So this is something that can change the way education works around the world. But let me share a bit more about, uh, about how it works. So basically what we do, uh, what we're preparing here is uh, to build a village and this village is a coming... A whole village? An entire village, yes. With about 150 houses in the beginning and another three, 400 after that at the, at the, at the next stage. So basically... By the beach? By the beach, right on the beach. Yeah. This is where we stay now, yeah. from this point further there, like right. uh, very near. Well, um, so the basic idea, the basic idea of the whole thing is that, that we're building the village and a part of uh, all the revenues which are received for the construction of the villas, because people are just buying their villas and they pay for their villas, right. is going to go for uh, the construction of the school. And this is how we build the school. But what is even more uh, interesting as a concept is that because this village is highly profitable, because imagine you have your house here, then you are coming for a month a year. The rest of the time it's rented with our management and we do okay. quite a lot and a very good return on investment for you. And a small portion of this is gonna go to maintain the scholarship of one kid. So we are opening about 150 scholarships for kids which are brilliant minds. And we want to support these kids to have access to education like never before. The school is a high-tech green school where they will not have to pay the Ministry of Education, we have great support, by the way, these guys are amazing. So I'm very happy that they're doing quite a lot in the country, we can collaborate. But they will not have to pay as well. So no parents, no the ministry, that's not going to be a burden for no one. Actually, the village is going to be maintaining the, the, the scholarships. And imagine you have your house, just everybody who is having a house is going to be maintaining one, one kit. And the way we right. do is that um, we want to allow the kids to select their mentors. So the moment you buy a house, you record a video and you say, uh, hey, I'm Salim, I'm like this, like that. Then we show this to the kids which are selected and they are picking their mentors. They are the ones saying, I want to have Salim and Salim so is the actually... the homeowners will be the mentors as well? It's a mentorship program which allows kids not only to be financially supported by a sustainable system that doesn't require money from outside, but it's actually generating everything that is needed locally. But also, it's a mentorship program that allows the kids to get in touch with an um, international community of people right. and all successful people because, to be honest, to buy a house like this, you have to be a successful yeah. man or woman, right? And you can always give a good advice to these kids. You can play with them, you're going to be on WhatsApp together. So, more or less, like a little bit like a second daddy, they, of course, they have their families. But it's like, that's good. I'm very passionate about this. I'm in love with kids in general. I like. That could be an amazing system. I problem. You, you, you've got plenty of kids yourself. Um, yeah. Why? Why now? Why here? You've got businesses all across the world. Right. You know, uh, I came by accident to Zanzibar. It was like um, three and a half years ago, with the COVID. Exactly. Like three days after I arrived, they stopped the flights, and I just ended up here. Yeah. I love the place because it's beautiful because the people are amazing. I mean, really nice people, like uh, I feel safe here. People are smiling, like, I mean, they're easy going, like Islander style of people. And then what is very, very important to me here is the permanent weather. So the coolest temperature in the air is 25 degrees. The warmest temperature is 30. 90% of the time is 27, 28. So this is the perfect weather to be outdoors, to be active, to be doing. And I love this place because of all the activities and sports. And this is why we build the whole village about activities and sports and of course healthy living and healthy food and like sustainability in general. So me, myself, I'm vegetarian and uh, I say this just because, uh, just to understand that one of the main reasons is again, like, um, you know, trying to uh, go sustainable in, 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 health, in regards actually to how we collaborate with the nature, more or less. And basically that's the main idea why I'm here, because I love this place. I, truly, I travel the world quite a lot but still, this place, it's, uh, I love it. Um, what made you come mm. up with this idea to, 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 build, to build this uh, futuristic school, if I may? If I may? 
Well, you know, first of all, I've been checking many different schools. Uh, let's just start from there. I love kids and I will do anything for kids. Actually, I find my happiness in the eyes of the kids. And when I do something about them that they really truly have, uh, like, that helps them to develop themselves in a nice way, this is what makes me happy. But then when I have been um, following different schools and their problems, I see that even here, but also internationally, many schools are struggling, struggling to survive for budgets and this and that. And I needed to come up with an idea and I was let me think about what could be done in a different way. So a school shall not be dependent by the ministry or by financial donors or by the parents. And at the end of the year, you are selling, would you please give me a little bit more money because we don't have to yeah. for that. And this is always a problem because even if selling wants to give the money, sometimes you can't. Yeah. And it's like a, an issue. And this is why I start thinking, is there a sustainable model that can allow this, this concept to work without, without you know, bagging for money all the time to someone? It's just generating itself. And you're like, is it possible that a school can generate money? Really? Not really. You have to get the money from the parents. Yeah. Don't, let's connect it to another business. What is the strongest business here? This. If you make a village where people own the place and they see it as their own, and then at the same time, they can get, we can give back something to the community and most important, to the most important, I would say, part of the community, the kids, I'm going to have my smile on my face. <laughs> all right. So the kids get to go to school for free. I mean, they've, they've, they've got all Not the all business. of them in the beginning. Yes. We only have 150 in the beginning, then we grow up to 500, 500. with the time. That's the, that's the, the, the target. target, yes. Right. So someone buys property here and that property maintains itself and at the same time it pays for the scholarship that's what absolutely you're absolutely so the idea is that return on investment here is significant for example uh average prices uh, vary here in between i mean average prices for the nest where we stay now here is in the range of about 500 six seven hundred dollars per night and this is after we had an accident here there was some fire before fire, yeah. and uh, we decreased the prices because of this because we need to rebuild everything but for now it's five six hundred otherwise it's a thousand per room per night. Why do I say this? Imagine that you have a house and this house is going to be rented at average seven, eight hundred, maybe a thousand per day. And the season here is all year long. Actually, there is a low season, but there is no off season like in right. Europe. Yeah. Because for example, in Europe, off season is sometimes nine, ten months. The season is like two, three months and here, here is different. Imagine that you have this house with a good, good occupancy. These houses could easily generate five to ten years of return on investment. And then such a house that is generating so much, imagine your house is doing a thousand per day. And That's imagine brilliant. you can maintain a kit at an um, incredible school on an international high level for 10,000, for example, a year. And this, the, your house is gonna make it in 10 days. What about that? And yeah. all of the rest is yours, the yeah. whole year. Of course, minus expenses, because there are some expenses. This is like a five-star resort. But still, this is a way to maintain the entire system completely sustainably without being necessary, for example, for the principal of the, of the school to be calling Salim every year and asking for money. Yeah. It's the other way around. They're gonna call you and say, hey, your uh, student is doing like this and that, and by the way, I sent you this much money to your account. <laughs> that sounds brilliant. <laughs> now, uh, as you said, this, this, this is still, uh, you're trying to experiment this and hopefully it will, it will work. Um, Another concept that is within this school is that you want to bring together green and tech. How, how is that going to work? How, will, how, how are you planning for it to work? Well, um, this is something that I believe could be a really interesting concept uh, to experiment with because what is there in the world is that there are many green schools. One of the very famous ones is Bali Green School and we're currently in touch with these guys and Bali Green School is a typical, deeply green school, deeply green, not in terms only about environment, but also about uh, the way of thinking, sustainability, and all these things. Like, um, basically, that's the idea of the Bali Green School. On the other extreme, you have the super high-tech schools, like Microsoft School of the Future, for example, and others like this, where we are in touch with as well, as partnership programs. Right. However, the techie schools are usually in the big cities, London, New York, doesn't matter, whatever it is, the big cities. And then you have the green schools on places like this and the tech schools at the other places. What if you mingle them and you create something like, I would say, um, a concept that is at the same time super green and very futuristic, 
green, futuristic, right in the into the nature, so that the kids can feel that they are in the nature, they can take the best of the nature, and at the same time, they don't lag behind on technology side. They're gonna be like one of the most developed ones. I can just give you one example. Do you know where intranet has been invented for the first time? Internet. Yes, where the internet, where is the, actually the home of the internet? It's Hawaii University. So basically, one of the most important technologies is coming from an island like this one. It's coming from Hawaii. Hawaii is already quite developed, but why not doing something which is gonna be quite next step here and give access to these kids to not just schooling, but super high tech, super modern, and at the same time, super green environment. And the, and the model of, of, uh, of teaching, uh, you, you, you know, pre-interview, we talked about this, uh, there won't be ordinary classes like mathematics or physics or chemistry. Uh, how is it going to be done? This is a new concept that uh, it's already there. There are a few uh, experimental schools around the world that are doing this. It's called project-based uh, education. Right. The project-based education is when you don't have the subjects, you don't have chemistry, maths, or etc. The, the, the standard things, but you rather have projects to build. For example, I give you this project as a kid, and I know that the project is designed in such a way that you, to construct this or to make it move or whatever it is, you need to need you need to know a bit of maths and a little bit of chemistry and biology, etc. But you as a course, kid, yeah. you enjoy it because you do it and you understand why you do it. It's not just learning by heart, just like that for the purpose of learning. For the kids it's a lot more entertaining and a lot more easier to remember what they do on the project-based education co concept. So the, for this reason, we go for the project-based education system because we want to have the kids not only learning, but enjoying on one side. And then on the other side, we have something very important also to share, is that we are planning to uh, take like a significant portion of the time at school for soft skills. Like for example, understanding myself like understanding right. others, understanding my happiness, understanding why my parents are like this, happy or unhappy, what exactly happens, or my friends, you know, all of this emotional intelligence in a way that is usually not there in academic education because currently at the current education around the world, which has not been disrupted since the 18th century, it's academic meaning that you have to be a perfect tool, a perfect particle of a great system and you just have to work for it and this, then you are successful. We say we want to go next stage. We want to make you a happy, fulfilled person that understands your emotions, that you understand other people around you, or your family and everything, how it works. And for this reason we have different classes. Like uh, for example, we have one very interesting class which is all about um, let me see, because actually I don't remember the names are uh, overcomplicated, but you know, we all have this uh, gut feeling that you're feeling yes. sometimes that there is something. It's, um, it's there, but sometimes we cannot understand what it is. And you know, these kind of emotions and this kind of understanding and perception to the world is something that could be trained. So we can actually train these feelings and try to understand what it is. It's not just that I feel something, you know, in my stomach, but I'm not really sure. It's like, what is it? So imagine that there is a school, that there is special programs, special classes where kids are having this education. And at the same time, they're living in an environment at this village with people which are conscious about the way they're living. Why do I say this? Because kids are learning by example. This is another thing that is very right. important. And they, your kids are gonna see what you do, not what you say. What you say is like coming from here, going out on the other side. But what you do, if you, for example, if you are a very sporty person, they will be sporty. If you're not a sporty person, you say, hey, it's super healthy for you, go do your exercise. They'll be like, oh, really, daddy, why shall yeah. I? Because yeah. you don't do it, how are they gonna do it? And imagine they're in this environment. Whenever they go to the beach or to the village, they see these people, and these people are like like-minded people, that they believe in all this, and they're gonna be a good example for these kids. So basically, these are the main differentiators for the school that we're building. I would love to go to, 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 to that school myself and it's by the beach, but surely a, an ambitious project like this eventually will attract international students. How are, going to, are you going to deal with that? International? Yes. Uh, that's not an issue, by the way. Uh, we, we do attract international students and I think that we're going to have, by the plan, we're probably going to have about uh, 30 to 50% local kids 
and about 50-70% uh, international students. Right. Because a lot of people are moving after their kids now, nowadays. This happened with Bali Green School and many others. So parents that they love a particular system of education and they love their kids, they just say, okay, let's move to Bali just because there is such an amazing school out there and I can, be, I can buy my house and uh, we can stay there and work remotely and we enjoy surfing or whatever we do there because it's actually amazing. And uh, what I believe that's going to happen in a similar way here. Right. And uh, the idea is that uh, in the beginning, the international students are going to be paying. But with the time, we're building more and more houses and every house is taking care of more kids. And the idea is that at the end of the day, the, who, the, the, the entire school can be subsidized by the, by the houses. So the kids shall not be paying. That's the idea. And uh, more or less, imagine that if you buy your house and you're coming from abroad and you are here with the kids for this, more or less your house will be maintaining your kids. Like, uh, you know, it's like additional investment if you do this. Of course. For, for, for those who want to come and invest uh, in Zanzibar, they know nothing about Paje. Tell us about this area. Well, there are a few main areas around Zanzibar. One is um, Stonetown, another is Paje, where we stay, another is Nungui, Kendwa, yeah. and no, Kiwengwa. Yeah. These are the four main areas. How does that differentiate? Stonetown is an ancient town, very old place, which has been famous for centuries for being a trade spot for East Africa. So basically it's, it's a historical place, which is very interesting to see. And as far as I can understand, now the government is planning to renovate a lot of these yeah. buildings, which are really old, and it's gonna be, it's an amazing place now, and it's gonna be even better. So this is like a historical place where you can just have a walk and see around and just know more about the culture of this place and all of Eastern Africa because it's a significant place for the history, even though it's a small island, it's been a significant place for the history of the whole area. Then if you go to the other places, um, Nungui and Kiwengwa uh, are resorts type of places, beautiful, but they're more like five-star kind right. of gated communities where uh, people are like five-star type of all-inclusive, etc., where you don't really go out. So this is a perfect place where people, if people want to go for this kind of, uh, let's say, vacation, just to relax by the beach and don't pay anything and have this uh, wristband, etc. Okay. just the traditional tourism I call. Right. Not very much my thing anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> what is my thing is where we stay here in Paje. This is the booming part of Zanzibar. This is the fastest developing area. Uh, here prices are growing extremely high now. And uh, for this reason, I'm investing more and more here and I'm buying more. And this place is all about active lifestyle. Uh, as you could see behind, so they're all the time kite surfers and uh, surfers and we have uh, the biggest gym here, calisthenics, sparks, horse riding, all the different type of activities and permaculture farming behind and like all of these things which are all about active lifestyle, open lifestyle. There's also a lot about party running around. So basically what I would say, Paje is more for people that are, uh, you know, like um, after being active. And if you go to Nungui, it's more about relaxing. You right. just relax, do nothing, enjoy life. That's it. And Stone Town is a place where you can actually go for cultural, like, you know, just see around, know more about the history of the area. Right. So for holiday makers who want to come to Paje, one, mm -hmm. but two, for people who want to <clears throat> get some of your cake, if you like, um, buy property, what kind of property are you planning to build in this futuristic village? Well, uh, having in mind that um, here um, the weather is always perfect, <laughs> we don't really need a big property. Of course, we do have such, uh, but um, the smallest possible houses are in the range of about 40, 50 meters square. Right. And this is literally like a bedroom with a small living area and everything else is outside. And then the mid-size type are about 80 to 100 something meters square. And then, uh, of course, they're bigger, like uh, two, 300 and bigger. So basically, what I would say here is that you don't really need to have something big here. Because of what I see, even for myself, uh, it's that you don't need to do big space because you don't stay inside. So you need to have a cozy, charming place that is going to be generating really well because the, the, the properties which are not that big, they're actually generating better. So 
just as an example, for example, if you want to invest a million dollars into the village and you want to build one house for a million dollars, or you have the option to buy four house, to make four houses for 250 right. each, the four houses are going to generate significantly better than the one. Right. So it's uh, still one million investment, but the, the, the small houses are just under higher demand. And for this reason, I would advise this way. And also for yourself, when you build a palace, that is everything is so nice and beautiful, it's amazing. You usually don't go out. I, I, I have so many houses like this. When I build my paradise home, sometimes I just, I mean, you know, I'm lazy. I say, hey, Salim, come to my place and you come to my place. Everybody come to my place. Yeah. You know why? Because actually there's no better place than my place. Yeah. Right. But at the end, I never go out. I don't know the people. I don't know the place. I don't know anything. So basically what I would advise is that we don't need such big, big things. It's actually 50 meters, 100 meters square, something like this. Right. Good enough so that you have your space. Cozy, nice, beautiful, green, right at the ocean, by the ocean. That's what you need. Yeah, the Indian Ocean, clear blue skies. Uh, in terms of construction material, what are you going to be using? Because I, I, I don't see a lot of concrete here. Uh, yes. it's, it's, it's a green place, isn't it? Yes. It's actually sustainable materials, but at the same time we're using uh, add-ons, additives, so that we can make them strong. But basically, there are a lot of very innovative concepts and materials that could be used that makes the place strong and at the same time sustainable. It's like, like it's very natural materials, but um, and strengthening them with a lot of new tech uh, materials so that we have this durability of the constructions. So basically, the idea is that these buildings shall be staying for many, many years. And having in mind that they're by the ocean, we have to be very careful with the material selection. Right. And that's why we go for high-tech uh, materials, just to make sure that uh, it's going to be sustainable. Because uh, on the other side, like pure natural, eco, etc. materials, they are not sustainable. They actually don't stay for long, especially by, by the ocean. And uh, that's why we use it. But we are adding on top like uh, special high-tech finishing details okay. so that we can make sure that that's going to stay for many years. Fantastic. You came here on holiday and uh, ended up staying. For people who want to come and invest, invest or visit or stay here for, for, for longer periods, um, how easy, how difficult is it to get the papers, the permits to come and stay here? To come and stay. Well, uh, for the people buying with us, uh, we can uh, organize um, our local residents, just because we have a system for this uh, to organize local residents. And um, uh, if uh, you come as a regular tourist, you can stay up to three months. And after three months, you got to go out and, and you can come back in the next day. You can get another visa. So it's not a really big complication. But um, if you are a resident, you can stay for as long as you like. You just get this card as a resident. And then you get also better conditions, like better rates for many things. If you go around the country, etc., you can see it a little bit more local and yeah. not so much like a tourist. And um, yeah, so basically there is one more thing that is also important to say is that um, uh, we, uh, we get all of the companies here under ZIPA. ZIPA is a local uh, registra yeah, registration, foreign, foreign agency, like, yeah. yes, like a foreign direct investments agency, yeah. which uh, is supporting all the big investments on the island. And with ZIPA and some other uh, authorities, like the condominium board and others, uh, we are getting a lot of, um, a lot of different benefits as, uh, as an investor and developer. And when we are selling to you as a sublease, you are getting many of those benefits as well, like a, like a co-investor, not exactly as right. a client. So basically, this is going to give you a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of benefits yeah. as well. Oh, fantastic. You've told us about the beautiful weather. I'm a local, so normally uh, locals don't uh, notice the weather. Tell us more about the food. Remind me, you're coming from the UK, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Yes. yes. So uh, I, I, I'm sure that you appreciate the weather now. I do, absolutely, 100%. Um, tell us more about the food. Well, food here is uh, fully organic. What I love about this place is uh, that, for example, if you buy something here, not always necessarily is going to have the perfect taste. It is right. tasty and everything, but it is organic. So, for example, in Europe, sometimes we are buying some things which are really amazing, but you don't want to know how they make them, right? And here, they're not using anything. So actually very, very organic. And then whatever you buy, you don't even ask. You know, in Europe, we always, always go to this organic parts of the supermarket. Right, yeah. 
And here you don't ask, they don't even know what is organic. Yeah. It's like everything is organic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. that's why one of the most important things to say is this. And we're preparing our permaculture farm now. With the permaculture concept, just to make it clear for, for all, is uh, when you plant a lot of different plants together in a particular way so that they can help each other in right. terms of nutritional facts. So this is the best way to build nutritional facts up to the max. And um, this permaculture farm is going to help us actually to do all this. And for the uh, seafood, etc., lovers, we're on an island. So everything is here. Oh, perfect. This is, does feel like heaven. I think I'm going to go change and, you know, look like you so that I can enjoy uh, <laughs> place here. Um, I think we've covered everything now. Right after, maybe we go to Kaiser. Yes! <laughs> You're going to teach me how to Kaiser. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll be back for more when you start uh, this ambitious project and we'll be with you all the way until it's complete. I will enjoy, um, actually I really enjoy your support guys and I will enjoy like everybody's support. What I would like to say uh, at the end is that um, I really don't want to build this as Carlos project because honestly I'm the key investor and I'm doing this. I love the idea, I love the kids, I want to do this because of it's not, for, it's not for the money, the, the school is uh, not for profit, right. but it is more about the feeling of the place, about my understanding of life. However, I don't want to make it as my project. I really want to have people involved, like anyone who loves the idea, being like say a media like you guys, and I'm so thankful for that, or a different kind of influencers, or anyone who likes this idea to spread the word, to help us go big, to make this experimental program, and if it works, to grow it all around the world together. I want to be, ha I will be really happy if within two, three, five years, we stay here, 500 people or a thousand people, and we can say we did that. Right, right. Yeah, all the best, man. <laughs>